Hello, Sheree Hansen here. Um, thank you so much for watching my video and I am very appreciative of all the new people who have subscribed to my channel, who have come on and subscribed. I really, really appreciate you getting the word out. Um, I'm doing a lot of work on myself as I always have. I continue my practice of the Wim Hof uh, 10 degree dunk in the morning for 13 minutes. I don't know why 13. I'm just, I'm just built that way, I guess. Um, and then I have my practice of Wim Hof breath. The thing I like about the Wim Hof breath is that it changes my brainwave vibrations. And I'll explain some of the sensation to me. I can only liken it to becoming fuzzy, <laughs> like, like Todd is fuzzy. Um, my body just starts to feel warm and it starts to vibrate. And then I get this feeling of so much peace, so much peace. The other thing that happens, which is interesting, is I see my thoughts. And what I mean by that is they're not random background, uh, you know, fully going on in my movie. They are actual clear thoughts that are coming through. And what that does for me in terms of meditation is I can see how ridiculous how ridiculous my thoughts are. What I have a tendency to do is plan and plot because of the work that my ego does on me about only if you work hard, only if you suffer, only if you are very, very active physically are you in a place of virtue. So I watch these spinning around. You know, when uh, you go to a restaurant and the orders are put on the wheel so that the cook can take them off and then prepare them? That's very much what my thoughts do. They go, you'll do this and then you'll do that and then you'll take care of this and then you'll do that. And as I do Wim Hof breath, I keep bringing my mind back to fill your lungs, empty your lungs. Fill your lungs, empty your lungs. So it kind of balances out that, that ego uh, earworm <laughs> lullaby of horror <laughs> that goes on. <clears throat> and uh, it really puts me in a place where I feel the protection of the universe, where I feel the strength of my body, where I feel the magic of my breath flowing in and out. And what a miracle that is. You look at how many people have breathing disorders, uh, even here in the summer when the air is toxic, and to have cold, clean air flowing over my body as I lay on the bed and do the Wim Hof breath is miraculous. Uh, today, the thing that I wanted to really focus on was the filter. You know how you can have a filter on a camera, the lens, you have what the lens is showing you. The lens can be extreme close up, it can be distant, uh, you can put a color on it. And I'm so aware, uh, looking back over my 79 years, of the fact that there were whole decades where I had one setting on my camera, only one. And so what tends to happen is I tended to believe that the world was this way. I had not understood that it was the way I was looking at things that was creating the movie I was making about my life. Uh, to give you an example of this, I was walking down the street the other night <clears throat> and uh, it's dark and it's cold and sometimes there's a wind and sometimes there's rain or snow. And I was thinking when I used to think in the past that this was 
unpleasant. So the lens I had about cold, cold water, putting my body in cold, or cold air coming in over me, or walking out in the cold, was that of unpleasant, negative, don't like this. And I was kind of, you know, those moments where you're looking at your old way of being and your new way of being. And I was kind of impressed by the peace that I felt and the freedom and the the beauty of walking in the cold as I'm walking around the blocks. And then my mind went to all of the other things that I have changed the lens of my life on. When I feel the urge to take an action, I always look at it. I always, I take it out like it was something I was going to wear for the day. This is an action I want to take. And I interview myself, you know, it's Barbara Walters. Hello, action. (laughs) You know, what is your purpose? Why are you arising right now? And I, I really analyze it. It's like, I have a feeling of anxiety, or I have a feeling of sadness about the world, or I have uh, a sense of isolation because I haven't talked to people for a couple of days. Then I do the autopsy, and this is an autopsy interview. It's it's scalpel. <laughs> going deep, man, going deep. And it's, The question, do you really need this right now? Is this a fear or a negative motivation that's driving you for this? Or is it something that you need to do to soothe yourself, to make yourself feel cared for, to improve your life. And the thing I've done in the last year, which I think is kind of like, yay me, um, it's okay to take an action just because I'm anxious and doing this thing will soothe me or calm me down. In the past, it wasn't. It had to be, there had to be some outward validation. The world was going to stamp my uh, work passport card, you went to another country, you did another task, good for you, here's your stamp. And now it's just a a case of, uh, I think the, the switch that flipped for me, the one that really made a difference was to understand that I couldn't understand. I know, I know, hold your forehead, take a deep breath. I can't tell what I'm headed toward, what my heat-seeking missile is shooting at in the present. I have to trust my instincts. I have to trust that the universe knows what's best for me. I have to be in a place of complete surrender. I do things to take care of my body and my health. I do things to make myself feel better. That's fine. But the issue of the negative, why don't you do this? You should be doing this. That's falling away more and more. I will do what I need to do to take care of myself, to show myself love, to ground myself, to grow myself. And I trust that the universe is working with me and is helping me on that. And last night when I went out and I was walking, it was very dark. It was cold. There was a cold breeze. The Christmas lights were spectacular. I was listening to something to teach myself once again more about human nature and the workings of the brain. And as I stopped for a moment, I could see on the ground the shine of a dime. I'm going to tell you about my history with dimes. When a dime appears on the ground in front of me, it usually means unexpected money is coming in. Riches. I call it the fairy signal. (laughs) 
the fairies are telling me there is money coming. And it was funny because I was kind of starting to grind up the old poverty pill and mix it in with, with jam to spread on my toast and eat. You know, it's just like, no, there's the money. And then the dime appears and I go, just keep coming back to trust. So my filter, my lens now is that the world is supportive and loving and I am surrounded by people who take care of me, who love me, who are people I can trust, who I can rely on. And it takes away so much of the um, fear of the outside world. The other part that I'm really in line with right now is I know things are failing. I know they're shattering. I know the old systems are like a high rise that's made of glass and it's shattering all around us and shards are falling on the sidewalk and people are going, oh my God, this is happening and this is happening and this is happening and this is happening. What can I trust in? You can trust in the universe. You can trust that you're here on earth for a reason. You can trust that you are the sunshine that other people seek in their lives. And you can trust that you have enough extra energy when you go out the door, when you talk to people, to be a light for them and to stand in compassion. So that's where I am. And it's a way better life. Oh my God, it's so much better. It's just, and if I die, that's not gonna be a horrible thing. I go to whatever comes next. And I'm not constantly trying to protect myself from my own ego, uh, you know, torpedo shooting, bombing, uh, you know, attacks of fear and negativity. I feel so much more content with who I am and patient with my growth. So here's today's. Today is look at your lens. What is the lens that you are using to look at the world? because that's what's creating your reality. I am running a workshop here called um, Discovering Your Ego, so you can learn how your ego works with you to keep you in a place of fear and smallness and insecurity. And once you learn that, it's so much easier to just tell it to go sit in a corner and just quiet down and shh. You know, we don't take it so seriously. Please do like and subscribe to my videos if you find they're useful. If you know somebody who's going through the thick weeds in the swamp and they are just wrapped around with anxiety and negative thing, uh, things happening in their lives and you think a video could help in any way, do send it over to them or tell them about it because that's what I'm trying to do is let other people know, yes, you can change your world. Thank you.